Hello and welcome to session number six of Outlander's Guide to Lidaria. I hope all of you have had a wonderful week so far. Let's go find our players. And here we are. Hello. 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 Ah, another week. Another week has flown by and we're back. Today, uh, unfortunately, one of our players will be missing because it, Matt is not feeling great. And uh, gosh, I hope he recovers soon. <laughs> That's a bad news out of the way. Wish you were here, Matt. Yeah, wish you well, Matt. Yeah. Wish you well, Matt. We love you. He, that's a, now we'll know if he uh, if he'll watch the bots. Like he, you have to reply. You have to tell us the password, Matt. If you do, uh, password being um, x one z point semicolon minus five. Yeah. X Y Z dragon cannon. Yeah, yeah, we got it. We got it. <laughs> All right. Awesome. So let us begin with our. Um, uh, with our summary, courtesy today of Sid. Yeah, so, okay. <laughs> I I don't know how sharing a video on Discord is going to work. We're going to give it a shot. Hold uh, on, a video? All right. uh, so I... It's a video. Yeah. <laughs> Do I need to get rid of the music? <laughs> uh, pro uh, you might be fine. There is some sound, but it's not essential, I guess. Cut the music. Cut the music. Cut the All music. Right. Cutting the music. Cutting the music. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let tell me if this looks okay. All right. I will just need a moment to load it up. Oh my it. goodness! <laughs> I I see a a picture of a drawing yeah. on the wall. Okay. Yeah, that is correct. <laughs> Uh, so this oh, you actually drew on, the town, on. didn't you? Not really uh, yet. Not all of it, no. <laughs> uh -oh. Um, oh my goodness. So for it's... this little recap, uh, I want to make a little tribute to a series okay. called Box Speak, and it's all about like uh, you'll see the format soon enough. But uh, yeah, uh, this was a fun little project. It really stressed me out, but I hope people. <laughs> <laughs> these summaries, I, these recaps seem to be stressing all of you out whenever it's I your am turn. Hyped. All of us except Dennis, who's like super <laughs> chill. What do you mean? What are we, I wasn't. <laughs> well, last week you said you were. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Now the pressure's on. All right. Are we good to go? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Let all me right, know if the go. sound is too low. Yes! Oh my goodness. ...of Eastern Cleon following the main Turn river. Off. Let's find it in. With a bath, preferably. They stop at the entrance to the large tavern, trespassing Tresem. Will best be on the Tresem's good side. They walk inside and speak with the tavern keep. Hello. Do you have rooms available? I'd also appreciate a bath. As Talix pays for most of the crew, they meet the tavern's mascot. Talix and Pip are enamored with her from the start. <laughs> what is your name? They call me Trixie! As Brooke, Talix, and Pip goes to take a bath, Pontifex stays behind. The tavern keep asks about Pontifex's amulet. Why I have certainly acted as priest and cleric, are you in need of divine feet? Well, you should talk to our priest, this Egan Heartbloom. Uh, I think he needs your help. While Pip goes to the river, Brooke and Talix takes a bath outside. Your arms. That's the price you pay for being a phantom, huh? Please don't hurt yourself to protect us. Magic manifests itself in many ways. You I have to understand what us phantoms do. This is the way that I've chosen, and I happen to be good at it. Meanwhile, Pip is scared away by a short woman approaching. Boy, where's your mother? Pip quickly distracts her and runs away! 
<laughs> Tekka and Pontifex meets back up with Talix and Brooke and starts looking for Pip. There was a monster. I, I didn't like her. If you see her again, let me chase her away. <laughs> Based on Jamil's words, they go and speak with the local Essen. The room has been made into an infirmary of sorts, with two occupied beds. A cloaked figure wearing wide robes is preparing some bandages. Oof! Pip runs up and hugs the Essen, believing it to be someone he's familiar with, but they wear a different mask. Do you have injuries requiring assistance? No, we are well. Do your patients require healing? The Essen named Amp lets Talix heal their patients and asks Talix to return to help with this healing magic. There are always people that need help for as long as I exist. The group then heads to the marketplace buying sorted supplies and foods. Talix and Pip find a sleeping owl folk <laughs> laying on top of a bunch of papers. Oh, it's so cute. Their name is Boovin, and they're studying the languages of Ladaria. Once Talix introduces himself, Boovin gets really excited! Who? T Talix Moore? I know you! I have studied your work! I, I have been, I've been trying to learn all these languages! And if you ever need translation, let me know! In their excitement, Boovin gives a great discount on Talix's purchase of <laughs> ink, quill, and some paper. And Pip buys one of their feathers to give to Talix. Here, you need a quilt. On the stage in the middle of the marketplace, two men are giving speeches. One speaks about astral bodies, among others the second sun, the antelope, which appears only once every few years. There's a conversation about local plants, in which Pontifex becomes very invested. Pontifex speaks with someone researching a fern that is used and that grows in water. The group meets back up when... I want a new rock! Aha! I found your new rock! <laughs> Pontifex spots a paperweight at a stall held by an old lady. Pep buys this polished symmetrical stone that seems magical and is painted in many patterns. Meanwhile, Talix enters the temple and knocks on the office door for the local priest. Opening the door, Egon wears vivid orange long robes and has sunken eyes and messy hair. Hello, I've heard you're in need of help. I have been looking for work. Help? Oh, yeah, uh, work. You wish to help with work. Egon lets Talix in to the sparse office and sits behind the desk. After some back and forth, Talix decides to leave, then Egon takes his hand. Uh, Talix, would you keep a secret? A big one. I have, I have lost my faith! Please fix me! Egon then speaks about his history, about his family's situation, his use of the fox's blessing to earn money for himself and his family, and his reason for taking the position as priest in the first place. You must come clean to the church. Return to Plurna. The church will show mercy to you, as they help me. And with that, Talix promises to return with the group tomorrow, leaving behind a letter to be sent home and a report for the Jade Council. Back in the marketplace, Tekka asks the people to report with any unusual dreams they've had, holding his core staff and a big handsaw. Afterwards, Pontifex queries the audience about a pyramid prism and the globe he's been holding. After taking many questions from the audience, a tall, hairless tabaxi puts up her hand. Oh, please do not ask me where I found it. <laughs> Is there any chance it's from an elemental plane of Earth? As Pontifex recognizes the tabaxi, they agree to a meeting in the tavern tomorrow morning. The end! <laughs>
Hey. Oh my goodness! Oh my what? goodness! Freaking amazing! <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, indeed, that was the anti. That was so. I I thought you were just gonna draw us. You drew everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you that was. So cool I am so happy right now. <laughs> that was so good, Sid. I'm oh. never going to put that much effort into a recap. So. <laughs> yes, I think we all kind of came to that conclusion independently, yeah. like, after each of ours. Uh, We're over. That was beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we have to see what Dennis does. <laughs> yeah, Dennis, it's back to you next session. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Say, that, that was, was so good... cute. That I was like it. the first recap that actually recapped. Excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, you're oh. you're all beautiful. They <laughs> <laughs> oh, spilled some purple paint on the table and on the floor. Um, so for those of you watching the stream and or later the VOD, don't mind that. <laughs> Oh, that was really good. <laughs> good yeah, job, my, Sarah. My cheeks you, hurt because uh, I was smiling I, the whole yeah, time. Yeah, it's the same. <laughs> Whenever I saw the backdrop, I I was pretty sure that's what you were going to do, but I didn't want to like preemptively <laughs> get like excited about it. So I was like... Yeah, yeah. But I'm really it. glad that that's <laughs> what it was. <laughs> like, I was. I was very excited. Oh. <laughs> All right, um, let's you, like, go back. On. Anyways, uh, post all of that, all of those cutouts, please. Oh, so uh, scan all of them. <laughs> okay, <laughs> please. Sure. They're really good. <laughs> my favorite my favorite was Boovin. <laughs> <laughs> Boovin's very great, yeah. Yes. Uh, oh. Oh wow. Uh okay, sorry, I'm just like still taking it in. It was so cute. Music. <laughs> Play on. Here we are. Ah, thank you, Sid, for that. I've given you your inspiration point for today. Thank it's you. On your side of the table. And yes, yeah. let's let's continue. As uh, uh, as Sid just summarized, uh, um, you guys have spent your day in Cleon, a colony where many among you feel unusually un unusually comfortable. Uh, some of you are familiar with the country that founded it, Nazridora, and fit right in. Some of you, the more unusual ones in your group, find that the people of Cleon are simply too busy learning and teaching and discovering to waste any time judging you, unless of course you're one of those artsy people from Kojia. Black clouds <clears throat> darken the sky and obscure the setting sun. While Pontifex is still on the wooden stage in the middle of the market, Tekka stands somewhat threateningly in front of the trespassing Tresim Tavern, holding a handsaw and waiting for someone to approach. It doesn't take long before a quivering, feathered form approaches from across the bridge. A creature with the size and proportions of a human, with the appearance of an owl. Uh, I believe that... But correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that te that uh, Brook also meant to leave the tavern at some point, but was it right after? Uh, it would be like 15 to 20 minutes Okay. into mm. Pontifex Beach. Okay. That it would leave to the tavern. Tape is staying for like an hour and then he's gonna show his uh, rock collection. And uh, for how long is uh, Talix uh, sticking around? Uh, I stick around, let's say, uh, right about towards the end, whenever um, Stars in Her Eyes addresses the professor, I look around and see that. Uh, the group is mostly convened around the tavern, and so I'll head over that way. Uh, also, additionally, uh, which didn't come up last session, but uh, Brooke 
would have requested for the group to meet up later at the tavern. Uh, so that, that is going to be your meeting point, uh, uh, including also for Tekka, even if Tekka does not actually stay there. All right. All right. So let's continue from there. Uh, in front of the tavern, uh, Tekka, you have, you see the first person approaching you. Uh, somebody that you might have... Uh, you might have seen uh, just a few hours earlier, uh, you might have spotted uh, him talking to Talix and Pip uh, earlier when the group was split up uh, and buying things at the market. Uh, although for, besides that, uh, this, this is a new sight for you, a uh, kind of creature you're just not at all familiar with. Uh, he's, as he, uh, he approaches, he seems rather unsure about coming closer and you see him just just glancing your way and then glancing away and taking a step forward and taking a step back hello ah! he takes a step away from you and then finally decides to take two forward one back and two more forward and then he finally says oh um Hello. I don't mean to hurt you, so be calm. The owl folk Are glances you... down at the handsaw and just visibly gulps. Are you here about dreams? Um, uh, well, I... Ooh, well, I have heard uh, you, what what you said earlier. Your your request. I am not. But can I still talk to you? Fine. If somebody else shows up and they're going to talk to you about uh, dreams, uh, I'll be going. You can stay. Okay, 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 okay. Comes a little bit closer and finally he's at a proper distance from which you should be talking to someone, uh, just a few feet away from you. Um, and he, from the satchel that he, that he has on his side, he pulls out his small book and uh, he holds it in his uh, winged limbs and says, um, y you are, you are uh, one of, they, they, they call you a, 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 um, a tiefling. Yes? Many names, but one, yes. I... Call me Tekka, if anything. Yes, Tekka! I will gladly call you Tekka. <laughs> uh, I, I am Luvan. It is, uh, it is good to, to meet you. It's, uh, woo, it's, it's, it's incredible. I, I never... Actually, I mean, I've heard of people like you, but I've never seen one, and um, so old too. I I have questions for you, if you will entertain me. Your reaction is better than most, so yes, I answer your questions. Oh, um. Oh, w wonderful! Thank you. Do you do you mind if I write down your answers? Can I see your notes after? Yes, yes. In fact, uh, you can see them while I write. And he opens the book and he holds it with both uh, arms, both of his wings, are just uh, uh, barely sustaining this, this book open, uh, somewhere, somewhere in the middle where the pages are blank. And uh, um, right there, it, it opened up in a place that was marked by a feather that is, uh, um, it's black with a blue, dark blue tip at the top. And as he holds the book open, you see the feather pick itself up, stay, standing vertically on the page. And then, uh, as Buvan says, Okay, uh, uh, so uh, first question. You can see that the feather begins to move and writes down, Okay, so first question. Um, well, I, 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 I am 
very curious about um, the, the, the kind of languages that you speak. What what languages do you speak? And the feather writes down the words as he speaks them. Hmm. Plurnen. He says in Plurnen. And the language of Essen. He says in Essen. Uh, I also speak a little bit of Ezen fur. I actually had a, a, an Ezen friend for, for a short while here in Lidaria. Uh, very good person. Takes a while to... to, to uh, how do I put this? Get them? But they're, 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 they're nice. Well, at least my friend was nice. She, she was very nice. I'd like to call her a friend. I don't know if she considers me a friend, but but one time she asked me a few questions about myself, and I think that curiosity might be the nicest thing that one can can get from an Um So that that, that was nice. I am blabbering. Uh, I uh, I have another question. Uh, but m may I ask another? Yes. Um, I I I do wonder about um. Who you are, you know, uh, as in y your your parents, your your uh, your lineage. I am of this continent and have been so my entire life. Ah, um, ooh, okay, okay, yes, well, I was wondering, though, ooh, more about, uh, uh, you know, race? If you know who I am, then you have your answer. The elf folk uh, stares uh, without uh, blinking, um, seemingly just trying to process your answer. And then he, uh, he anxiously nods and seems to uh, decide against uh, trying to ask any further questions on, on, uh, on that subject. And he says, okay, okay, yes, yes, no, I, I, I understand. Uh, where? Y y you said you are uh, off Lidaria, but but what um where compared to here? Uh, was it one of the colonies? Was it uh do do you, do you have do you know? Can you give me directions? Hmm. I have walked for days from the north. I have lived along the coast. And in the forest. I does it does it does it mean you do not have a place you call home or that you call every place home? Hmm. I had a home. Now I am looking for a new home. The quill writes down your words and then pauses as Buvan does not speak for a few seconds. And then, uh, you know, it's this time with uh, a bit more of a, of a of an understanding nod and says, okay, okay, okay. Ah, so, so very interesting. Um, He's just I your... want to ask you a question. Me? Oh, oh, me. Goodness, yes, I have answers, I hope. What are you hoping to gain from your questions, Puva? Oh, um, ooh, gain? Um, I do not see the, the pursuit of knowledge as, um, 
as a gain that is other than per personal growth. Um, how do I put this? Uh, I am very interested in, in, in languages. I, I, I love languages. I love learning new languages. And uh, it, it is my belief that one cannot be interested in a variety of languages without also being interested in a variety of people. In my experience, those who read also write. Will you not write of this? I have never published any work. Uh, generally, people who hire me, uh, they need me to translate something on the spot and I just take whatever they have and translate that or I, I act as an interpreter. Um, between people, but uh, uh, me writing something, perhaps, in the future, um, when older? I, I didn't really consider it. Yes, I could. Could could I? Do, 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 do I? do I have permission? I am not the one to permit you to write. That is your own choice. I will take that as a yes. Thank you, um, thank you for, for entertaining me. I, I, I didn't really, um, actually think of a, a, a long list of questions to, to ask, because I, 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 I just saw you and I thought, ooh, I, I can't, I can't miss this opportunity. And so I came here and perhaps I, I, um, I will think this over and, uh, um, if, if the, I have more, uh, I will look for you. Hmm. Boven, one... Last note. Is it a question? Because I will gladly give more answers in exchange for uh, the answers you have given me. Hmm. More a direction. When dreams are mentioned in your translation work, direct them to me, if you could. Uh, why, why, yes, of course, I, c I could do that. Uh, do you have... Oh, no, you do not have an address. You did not give me an address. I suppose I will... Um, the, the, the postal service on the peninsula is quite good. Um, some some uh, mailmen will actually track anyone down anywhere in the peninsula. So they say I've actually never um, hired someone for that kind of job. But um, I will make sure that word reaches you if... Uh, um, somebody speaks of dreams and and I know and I tell them and I make sure that the two of you meet is that is that a is that a sufficient answer yes Ooh, okay good good um thank you thank you uh Becca uh, you have been very kind hmm. you are kinder than most He looks down, a little flustered, and then he uh, closes the book <laughs> and pops it into his uh, his uh, pouch and says, "Okay, um, thank you, thank you. I I will let you, I will let you be. Um, got things to do, got work to do, but thank you. And um, oh, uh, if it looks like um, uh, looks like bad weather is coming, <laughs> uh, I'll just I'll just be inside." And he wanders off. <laughs> and you can see uh, that the uh, the black clouds that were starting to gather, they have fully covered the sky and it's beginning to sprinkle just a little bit. He's just like a real owl. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. I want a Boovin plushie that goes yes. oh, when you squish it. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> because they hide in the rain. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, I didn't expect science to be the reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I... Anyways. <laughs> ah. Okay. Um, as Pontifex is still giving a speech, I believe that the Brook was going to be the first person to leave, right? 
Yep. 50 minutes in? Okay. Um, and if you're heading for the tavern, you will find uh, Tech at this point being alone. Oh. Good to see you, Tekka. Um, I thought I wanted to do something. Do you mind coming in? Hmm. For a time. Yeah, I, I told Pip to let the others know that <clears throat> after they're done with the speech, uh, we should gather in the tavern. Are uh, you hungry? Hmm... Um... Yes. Good. And he walks into the tavern and goes to the barkeep. Um, excuse me? The woman behind the counter at this point, uh, uh, the, the tavern is a little bit busier than it was when you guys got here first, but she uh, she she comes to you within, within half a minute uh, right away and says, Ah, good evening. Good evening. Um... Is the kitchen still open? Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. Are you hungry? Uh, yeah. I would like to order a bit more. You saw the group we had. If we can, if it's possible, um, on our room or into our room, a few loaves of bread, some cheese, some sausage, some wine, some beer, and some juice. <laughs> some, you said. Uh, there is four of you? Four or, or five? There's five of us. Okay. Then, uh... Ah, uh, the... Uh, if I remember, the, the Jewess is for the little one, yes? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody else? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll... I will get that done. Well, actually, give a little bit of extra juice. I'm not sure if everyone here drinks alcohol, so... Just in case. I will deliver food and drinks to your room uh, in just a few minutes. All right. He turns back to Tekka. You want to wait inside? Want to wait outside? I should wait. I have given orders. Oh. Oh, yeah, true. Well. Uh, I'm going to get comfortable then and wait inside. If you see the others, let them know where... We're meeting, okay? Yes, I will. Okay. Uh, Brooke, she uh, she charges you for the dinner. Mm -hmm. as, uh, <clears throat> previously discussed. Um, the next person to leave, I believe, is Alex. Um, right, sure. Before, before Pip. So Tech is outside. Mm-hmm. Uh, Taka, uh, how's the, how's the, you know, uh, the investigation going? No visitors mentioned dreams so far, but Brooke awaits you inside. Oh, uh, sure. Uh, is it urgent? Mm, it can wait until... All is present. Um, did that owl person come see you? Boven, yes. They were curious. Oh, uh, so... Like you. Oh. Yeah, I, I suppose that makes sense. Do you know where he went? Mm, Tekka, like, points vaguely in the direction that he saw Boobin head off to. Hmm. Okay, uh, I'll be back in just a few minutes. Okay, <laughs> I will remain. The direction in question is back, uh... Uh, towards the bridge. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have any idea where to where to find him? Uh okay, roll an investigation check. Yeah. Alright. Uh 
20. Ooh. Uvan leaves very, very distinctive footprints. Uh, with the rain... <laughs> With a with the rain falling and the ground being a little uh, wet and easy to to leave imprints on, um, once you get over the bridge, you actually can find uh, his trail that begins to leave out of the market and towards the buildings on this side of the of the colony. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> Pip sees sees Talix just following a trail of feathers. <laughs> <laughs> I meant more like talons, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Talons, you say? Um, yeah. <clears throat> Until eventually you would, uh, all at once, uh, you would uh, see the um, those footprints reach this building over here. Hmm. <laughs> Do I see Pip following me? <laughs> he got bored. <laughs> Are you stealthing? <laughs> no, I don't think he would be stealthing. <laughs> but he's oh, just uh... like he's just like twenty feet back. Just <laughs> the professor is still talking to his friend. Pip nods. Hmm. Okay, uh, oh, uh, you know, Brooke wants us to meet at the, uh, the tavern where we're staying, um, I suppose I should escort you back, the professor might be busy for a while. Uh, so yeah, let's, let's go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Tekka. <laughs> uh, actually, before before the two of you return, uh, cool. uh, Tekka, in the time uh, uh, after Talix left uh, uh, in search uh, of Buvan, um, you were approached by someone. Uh, a small gnome man with uh, a short, dark blue hair. And the... The one thing that kind of catches the eye right away is uh, uh, this thing you've seen. You've seen gnomes previously, and you've heard uh, that they are particularly known for their unique kind of weaponry. And it's hard not to notice uh, this man, otherwise dressed quite normally, but he's carrying this uh, metallic long tool on his back that reaches. Uh, it's pretty much as tall as he is. So because he doesn't carry it like that in a way that. It, it's about a foot off the ground, so it reaches far above his head. Um, you, you know it is to be called, uh, to be called a rifle, uh, some kind of weapon that works somewhat like bows do. Uh, it can harm people from a distance. And the, the way he, he approaches, uh, he doesn't at all seem uh, afraid to walk up to you despite the height difference. And he comes all the way to you, crosses his arms and looks up to you and says, Heard you want to hear about dreams? You would be right. You said you're going to pay for them? For the information? Depending if it's of value to me. If it can help me, then yes. Well, I'm sure you're going to like this one. I got something for you. He stares at Tekka, sort of like up and down, uh, briefly at the chainsaw that he's holding, uh, and then at the, the items on his back. Uh, and then uh, um, he he seems uh, rolling inside check, actually. All right. Right, like I mentioned, he seems uh, uh, unafraid, uh, not not uh, at all um, feeling 
<clears throat> well, weird about being here, being seen with you. Uh, he doesn't glance around. He seems utterly unconcerned with, uh, um, with the situation. This is just like a normal conversation to him. Um, uh, and still keeping his arms crossed, but uh, for the first time, just uh, looking away from you, but in a way that seems like he's uh, like remembering something. He says, "There's this place, part of the West. People talk about this one tree, some kind of." Uh, like an oak with bright pink leaves. And they say that if you sleep underneath it, you're going to have the most wonderful dreams of your life. Well, I've done that. I was stationed nearby and saw the tree, gave it a try, and. Well, turns out it's true. I dreamt about a field of purple flowers, small house, big enough for me and my family, wife and kids, happy. Everything was good. Never had a dream like that before or after. Normally when I sleep, I don't dream of my family, at least not of them being happy and alive. The tree's got something to it. Hmm. Now then, show me that silver. That is useful. Hmm. Uh, and take our hands five silver to the no and says five more if do you remember any creatures in your dream any figures beings other than what you know Uh, he takes the money that you, that you gave him at first, and then he eyes uh, the rest of it. Uh, um, you see, you see his, uh, his lips sort of, uh, um, his, his expression changes just slightly, but then he goes right back to a stern one. Um, looks back at you straight in the eyes, and he says, Well, not in that dream, no. Nobody but my family and I. And Tekka hands him the other five. Thank you. Snatches the, the coins. <laughs> <laughs> Could you say how many days travel to this oak? Do you know where that elven colony is? You got the guts. And if you're not afraid of what lurks in that area, all you gotta do is travel west. About a day's worth of travel. You march like a gnome. I appreciate your information. <laughs> no others have approached, so this has been very helpful. <laughs> People are cowards. Are you going to be a coward or are you going to check it out? I will see it. I must. Well then, good luck staying alive. You'll need it. He, uh, he drops the coins uh, into a small coin pouch. Gives you a brief nod. Turns around and uh, walks away from you. Tech, uh, like leans against the tavern wall uh, and kind of just gives a, a quick nod. A few minutes later, Alex and Pip approach. Um. Oh, hello, Tekka. <laughs> Any luck? Um, I don't know if it's luck, but I have gotten information. Oh. 
Well, that's good. How about you? Did you find your owl friend? Um. <clears throat> well, uh, let, let's go inside. <laughs> You're coming with, right? Yes, I have what I need. Oh, good. Pip, does <sighs> your rock give you joy? Pip not. Good. And take our heads inside. <laughs> and I'm ready as. To these boots. Yeah, and in response to that, as you're about to cross into the building, you hear a muffled voice from beneath Pip's uh, shawl say, Oh, good, I hate the rain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Talix, you could barely see, like, uh, a bit of, like, this, this form uh, where the rain would not fall onto. <laughs> <laughs> One right. uh, conspicuously dry spot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they're all inside. Well, um, Rook's waiting in, in the room, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, food is being. a feast prepared. Yeah, cheese and sausages and uh, all the kind of stuff is, is uh, waiting in the room you have booked uh, by the time you arrive. And uh, uh, for the time being, Pontifex is not done yet. Although. Uh, Probably any minute now, he will join you. Alex is so happy to walk in the room and see all this food laid out. <laughs> I guess Brooke would be laying on one of the beds. And once he hears the door open, sit up. Oh, I've been meaning to try more of this cheese. It's wonderful. Did you try any? Oh, Not look at yet. this. Oh, what sort Jeez! of sausage? <laughs> <laughs> Squeak immediately turns visible and scurries and jumps off of Pip's arm onto the bed and and just runs and and like vaults it towards the cheese. Oh, uh, I I like dive forward and grab one piece. <laughs> there is a rat in your dinner now, Brooke. Well. Since it's Pip's red, I guess I let it stay. <laughs> Don't worry, I just got a shower. Not that I wanted it. <laughs> um, I'm assuming Pontifex is not done yet. Uh, after a few minutes, during which Talix and the Squeak have already consumed some of the cheese, uh, Pontifex finally shows up. Um, not at all bothered by uh, the fact that he was raining. He just, when he walks in, he leaves behind a trail of water. Uh, um, try to not step on the food, possibly. Or <laughs> 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 make it wet. Anyways, glad that you all are here. Um, where I'm from, it's a common thing that once you finish a mission, you celebrate it with a feast. To forget whatever happened, or celebrate whatever you achieved, and just to have some off time before the next mission. I know not all of you have finished your mission yet, but mine is, well, the original mission, mission of finding the whereabouts of our friend has been finished, so enjoy the feast, enjoy the evening, you've all done very well. So yeah. Oh, that's wonderful, Brooke. Thank you. Right. Uh, shall we have a toast? Sure. Maybe a toast to our friend Jamuel here and... Oh. To oh. our... Success of sorts. <laughs> um, uh, can we... Let's... Can we uh, open Jamuel and see? Yeah. Uh, you open up the book. Uh, I believe it is in Pontifex's session so you'll just uh get it out uh, and the, the book has been uh, uh he probably protected from the rain so it's nice and dry and you open it on uh, uh the latest page after everything else that he has uh, written about you today uh are you what are you asking him 
Oh, uh, I don't know. I just sort of wanted him to be present for the toast, if that makes okay. sense. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll grab a glass of ale and clink it with... I assume Brooke is, has something. Yeah, definitely. He has also a beer, ale, whatever you oh. might want to call it. Tell us, we're just going to look to the others and see what they do. Take Hippo's out. pouring a bottle of wine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take us a cup of ale. Tali, Wait, did we see a did Pip just say he? Did Pip just say he is pouring a bottle of wine? Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> have, you ever drank, have you ever drank that a Pip? Pip nods. Can I inside check? <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> yeah, if you want to roll, you can roll. Huh. Once everyone joins in, I'm satisfied to go ahead and start on my drink and... Oh, uh, sorry, Jamuel. I, I hope it's not tempting you or anything. <laughs> I don't think you could taste it, though, if I... Probably best we don't try. How did your insight check go? I don't know, I rolled an 8. Oh. Uh, am I delegating that? Yeah. <clears throat> um, it. I mean, it's it's obviously hard to, to read Pip since he didn't say anything. Um, but if you if you keep like looking at him quizzically, um, you'd hear. I've had communion wine before. <laughs> hey, Pip, don't talk with my mouth full. <laughs> uh, well buddy I don't think this is the same I have ordered some juice though for you I want you to be careful fresh not in to the drink morning. too much <laughs> yeah that's why I said I think you should rather drink the juice mm, Pip nods and he offers him <laughs> uh, uh, glass of juice, and then tries to reach for the wine. He lets you take it. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> no underage drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Not on Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> Safe, Winter. <laughs> Dodged a bullet. <laughs> um, so Alex is going to procure a knife and start slicing bread and cheese and meats and stacking them in a peculiar way. Lunchables. It's something we something we did on the farm. Working out working out in the field. It's like Galtanya thing. You've I know worked... it probably seems strange, but You've worked on a farm? What kind of farm? Oh, uh it's... well Weed and hay mostly, and uh, you know, to some animals. This was a long time ago. Huh? Uh, are you surprised to, to learn this? Uh, <laughs> people usually tell me I look like a farmer. He looks at him, recognizes it. Yep, they're right. You do look like a farmer. Now that you mention it, just from how you've been. Presenting yourself, you seem oh. more like a, well, not that farmers can't be religious, but more like in a different field of work. Did I did I cut you off, Sid, earlier? 
Ah, uh, those is fine. You can keep this conversation going. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. No way. Um. Well, uh. I suppose you could say the church, uh, saved me from it. <laughs> well, that's, that's given some steps, but, uh. Saved you. Saved you from farming? Well, I mean, it wasn't, uh. It's nothing against farming. Uh, obviously, my whole my whole family does it, but well, my mom's, mom's family. But was your home not safe? Oh. Hmm. Yeah, I, I wasn't. Though, it's time to take another big swig of ale. <laughs> Well, I suppose I sort of made it not safe in the end. It was never great for me, you know, the point of, point of my years. Hmm. Uh, I didn't really fit in with the people there. And uh, my, my old family wanted me to do bigger and better things, you know. <laughs> Again, nothing against Farman, but... We all wanted... And I wanted to do something else. Follow more in my father's footsteps originally, but... I, I sort of do that now. And the professor is a big part of that. So your father was also a man of Vakanas? No, uh, he was a, he's a researcher. Uh, he's the reason I'm, I'm so keen on science and just learning about the world. Especially animals, and, but people too. Hmm. Good work. I'm glad you yeah. found a place or job you want to do. That's important. Well, not exactly doing what my what my father wanted, but but what you want, right? Think... Well, I couldn't do exactly what my father does. He's uh, a true genius. Ah, uh, he's amazing. Um, but but I'm doing good things with my life. A lot better than I would have done if I was back where I was. It's good to be doing so much good for the world, for for the church, for people here. Hmm. And Brook gets closer to him and gives him like a clap on the back. Potentially a bit harder than he planned to, since he might have, <laughs> <laughs> since he might have taken a glass or two before you guys arrived. <laughs> well, <clears throat> just know that you're doing good thing, and if you take care of others, people will take care of you. That's the only way this world works, if we work together instead of against each other. And so, takes another big hip. Oh, here, here. Here, here. Oh, this is such a wonderful bunch of people. You know, I and, wasn't sure about you, uh, you at first, but you're all very, very kind people. <laughs> is it because of how we look? <laughs> oh. I'm sorry, that's not what I meant. Uh, it's fine. It's, I mean, I don't want to talk for the other two, but it's, it's the usual reaction. So, no offense taken. Uh, Taka, did you get something to eat? Uh, yeah, if there are any, like, this like a fruit or like berries. Take over probably like take us a few pieces of those. Watching on them. 
Mm. There will uh, be fruit available, yes. Yeah, you know, I don't think the professor really eats meat much either, but if you... We can have, you can try some bread. I mean, it's... Some people don't think it's the most exciting thing ever, but... It'll fill you up, and it's... You know, it's not... Uh, no animals in it. I appreciate it. It is only hmm, fresh produce. It's not easy to come by on the road. This is a relief. So, Taka, um, do you normally eat Ladarian food? I don't know how to answer. That. You know, well, I mean, the food of Ayatara or whoever, uh, the native Ladarians. It is all of animals, plants, of the earth and the sea of Daria. But all I know is Plurna food. Recipes. Well, I've shared a bit about... I'm curious about where you two grew up, actually. I mean, Pep, I, I assume you're a colonist. You know, born in a colony. Tekka... I don't even have the first idea. <laughs> I lived in a northern colony all my life. Never stepped outside until now. How did you learn your religion and... Through listening, reading, feeling. So you, you have read about the Lady of the Land? There is not much, but some here and there. I don't think I've ever seen a religious text from the Lidorians. Do you... Do you carry one with you, by any chance? No. I would be very interested in seeing one. I, uh, I want to learn about her, about... all the ways to this land, you know? Well, I... Hmm. The information... I obtained while you were away might help us in the search. Oh? There is a large oak a day's travel from here that gives sleepers dreams. You mean... Brief correction. Like, uh, it was a day's travel from an elven colony. Uh, yeah, that's what I thought. Got it, okay. Mm. Far from here. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, give streams to people who don't normally have them? Mm. Any chance? Different dreams. Which Do you think there's any connection to well, what I saw? <laughs> it should give you insight and help you understand.
do when... you want to speak of it? Have speak you learned of... more about your dream? Sadly, no. Uh, well, I... Here. Uh, Talix will get out his big book. Uh, Dennis, do you need to say something right now? Or... Uh... Winter, how many elven colonies are there in this? You know of exactly one. All right. And you're familiar um, with that one. Yeah. Don't keep talking, Jason. I think I also know of exactly one. Um. So I'll get out. Talix will get out his big book, and he'll open to a sketch which was not sent as part of the letter but was featured in that wonderful recap from last session <laughs> uh the sketch of the figure that i trimmed about yeah um does this sort of person look familiar to any of you <sighs> he had purple skin white hair no it didn't seem like a Ladarian person, but it's also not any sort of person I've seen in Plurna. But the dream was in Plurna. Somewhere. Somewhere I didn't know. But I could, I could see Valkanoth. Well, uh, I haven't learned anything else. But... Do you Are... believe them to be friend or foe? of your Bakanath. Could you feel or sense? Oh. I really didn't have much of a sense of him at all. Uh, no familiarity. Uh, but he seemed... Uh, it seemed very important somehow. But it's silly. I, I, people dream of weird things all the time. It's, I suppose it's just special to me because unique. If I was like the rest of you, I'd probably forget it in a day. Trust your senses, Talix. If you felt it important, it is important. Pip, you enjoying your juice? Mm -hmm. uh, oh no! Look down at Squeak, who is very round and plump at this moment, <laughs> who has eaten an ungodly amount of cheese, <laughs> and Pip uh, carefully uh, cups cups his hands on, under him and picks him up. Mm -hmm hoists him up onto his shoulder he almost is in danger of sliding off but quickly grips onto the cloth and, <laughs> oh no oh. you know I'm pretty sure eating too much cheese can be bad for rodents <laughs> how can that be when the taste is so heavenly I suppose Vladarian rodents might be an exception. And then uh, Pip's voice comes through Squeak. I I have an important question. Please. It's very important. How do Ezen eat? Huh. Uh, well, I certainly don't know. Tech on any, any insight? No. They keep things private, from what I know. That's uh, about as far as I know, too. Yeah, broken knots to that. Maybe we'll find out someday. You could ask them next time you see one. Oh. They, they don't like to talk about that. 
Oh, it's all right. Yeah. I asked Oov a lot of questions, and he only answered some of them. Tell us about Oov. If you don't mind. I'm very interested. Oof. Oof's my Tell best friend. <laughs> <laughs> Oof is my best friend, and I miss him a lot. How'd you, uh, how'd you meet him? Um, when, when I was a kid, um, when I was a kid, my mom and dad took me to Oof, and, and they, they had him look at me, and they were wondering if there was something wrong with me. But Oof didn't think so. And I, th I thought you were sick. No. They. They just thought there was something wrong with me. Because I could do stuff. Oh. And so. After. <laughs> Pip looks at Brooke. He nods. Uh, after mom and dad left me, um, I I spent a lot of time with Oof, and and he was my friend. Oh. Alex is going to attempt to give Pip a hug. Pip will back away from it. <laughs> oh. Sorry. Pip, uh, we should find a zoo back at your colony. I can't go back there. Oh. There are, there are bad people there. They're not as nice as the people here. People here are really cool. Well, that's true, but there are good people home too, like you said. You shouldn't leave your home behind if you... Well... That's not my home. So you don't want to go back? Even for a visit? No, I, I, my home is with, with my granny. Her granny? Mm. Where is she? She's, she's near, she's near Litta, where I grew up. Well, should we go to see her then not yet i i have to get things for her is that why you're here you're here to get to get some things for your granny yeah she can't leave the house she can't leave the house as much so i i need to get things for her well we were just at a market uh, what what does she need I can't just buy them. They're, they're. Is it medicine? I don't really know. I got some things already, and he he reaches down to a pouch and and uh, picks out a few seeds. Alex just she needed. Cocks his head. She needed these, and I'll get it to her later. But I'm not done yet. Can I surmise the origin of the seeds? Yes! Uh, roll. In this case, I'm just going to say a history check. Oh! 
<laughs> That's worse than nature. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, it's a nature plus five. <laughs> yeah. The skills are all I have. <laughs> um, while the seeds themselves are not of a plant that you know of, uh, you do recall seeing uh, this kind of seeds all the way back just a few days ago in the cave uh, uh, at the bottom of the cave where you met the lady. And you do recall Pip... Uh, Go, uh, going around before you uh, before you freed that lady and talked to her you remember him poking around uh, near the trees and picking things off the ground oh she's interested in uh, rare specimens I suppose mm-hmm well, sort of like me I'll pull out some random plant or bug that I have Nearby yeah, she doesn't need that. Oh, okay. I was just trying to make a connection. Sorry. <laughs> wow, How much Alex. are you enjoying this, Austin? How much are you enjoying playing a kid? I love it. <laughs> uh, well... <clears throat> The more you talk through me, Pip, the higher the likelihood I'm gonna spill it. I'm gonna blow. <laughs> oh, sorry. Well. I'm trying so hard to see the names of the towns on this map, but you can't Same. zoom in on it. <laughs> if you what have map? some pictures of that... The Ladaran Zasberg Peninsula the map. Oh, yeah, I can I mean I can well, bring I mean, it on the table. I'll just go to it in the Discord, I guess. Or in the Discord. Oh well, well since we're since we're talking about it, we might as well just oh duh. Said <laughs> Was did you say Letta was the name of the Letta. Letta. It's over here. Is it the one in the bay? It's kinda hard to read. Yeah. yeah. It's it's okay. on the table now. You can look on the table. Oh, oh, cool. Well you put a marker there now. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Um like a little green marker. Can I put a marker or can we also put a marker on Arya? Since Talix has mentioned it to something. Just put a marker on it. What what color? Okay. Oh. It should be green for Austin. Oh, mine are yeah, purple, yours. obviously. <clears throat> oh okay. Yeah. And while I'm promoting you, if you'd like, you can just uh, oh, okay. go in your objects, components, cool, cool. Uh, player pawns. Yeah, bring in your own. You can. Uh, is there anything it. else that people need to uh, talk about over the dinner or feel compelled to like? Yeah, share probably. Or share? Okay. Um, Tekka, do you know what colony uh, the tree is in? Hmm. Did Tekka okay. mention it? Did not mention me. Well, I guess you're in luck because um, the only elven colony I know is Sim Simlilon. So I'd at least assume that that's the colony that they're talking about. Where is it? Well, it's like. Way more west where we are, like more like northwest at the second lake, if you can see it over here. Hmm. Nope, not there. Where am I? <laughs> <laughs> that so uh it's it's a month's travel at <laughs> at best. Oh I see. Well once we are all done with our duties, I will be walking towards that oak. Well, maybe if we hang around for a bit, we could afford some horses. Wait, do horses exist on Lunar? I hope so. They do. Okay. Maybe we could afford some horses or something. <clears throat> oh. Well, oh, Tekka, you... Yeah. travel too. Yeah, well, Tekka, you know what? I have to eventually go back there anyways. 
So once we're done with our business, which brings me to my next question, I would definitely accompany you or show you the way there. I'm assuming you have never been there. No. Well, if that's okay with you. Any help is appreciated. Talking about business? Yes, mm -hmm. uh, that leads me to something as well. So, uh, you, you first. Uh, I wanted to just to ask what the plan is for the next few days. Ah, okay, good. Um, well, I know that, uh, that ump person, that Ezen, was hoping to see me again, and maybe we have a bit more money to be made there. All doing some good for this town. Uh, I had a bit of a strange encounter with the uh, with the priest, but he seems to want all of our help. Uh, I think Talix will just kind of explain the whole situation if we want to avoid going over it all again. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Okay, uh, but yeah. so I'm not sure how. How exactly he thinks we can help him regain his faith if he's not willing to confront it himself, but I don't know. I'd, I'd like to help the man, you know? Sure. I will give him a chance to explain. Well, that's it, I suppose. Um, we haven't found much else to do as, uh, well, the way I assume you normally get your work, Brooke. Uh, I haven't necessarily looked, but usually when a town needs help, they put up, well, when a town wants help from us hunters, uh, phantoms, they put up banners in these black and purple colors so oh. every phantom can look for it and know where to look for a job so a bulletin of course that's how people find work right <laughs> i've only ever worked for the church really <laughs> but uh yeah that makes sense something for the phantoms or maybe just something some town's person might have put up. Hmm. We just... Uh, I kind of depleted all my funds already. I'm not ready for a big journey. Especially not a month's long one. Fair. Although, uh, I suppose uh, on the way back to that elven colony, whose name Talix would remember, Simil... Simil... Simile one. Yes. That one. <laughs> uh I might be able to get a bit of money from my church in Aria. It's uh it's on the way if we don't mind going by boat for a bit. <laughs> it would be a help. Yeah. Yeah, uh, maybe tomorrow we uh run those errands and uh See if there's anything else put up around the town we could help with. What about you, Professor? <laughs> <laughs> what are your plans for tomorrow? Oh, oh yellow. Forms you. <laughs> 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 Pontifex informs you of uh, um, how he has this uh, meeting with uh, uh, the Baxi Stars in Rise later that, uh, well, the, the following morning, but. Uh, once he's done with that, he will join up wherever you guys are, and he asks not to, not to wait for him. Then we spend one more day here. Prepare yourself. Just, just one. Hmm. 
I mean, to... uh, of course, that's a that's a best case scenario, but maybe we'll need more money than that. Let's see what kind of jobs we're able to get tomorrow, <clears throat> and then make a decision then. I am very comfortable here. I mean, haven't you noticed how great the people are here? Unbelievably great. It's... Nazardor was... Well, it was the best time of my life. And this is just like it. It's... We can be ourselves. Even... I mean... You, you can be yourself, Tekka. And... Ah, oh, there's people here, they don't judge. I don't have to hear about other people's theories about my parents or whatever they think it means. Uh, it's, they're, they're just interested, and they're, they're interested in all kinds of folk, and they're very open-minded people. Out of curiosity, do they actually, the people from Nasodar, do they actually not judge, or do they just not care? Was that to me? Was yeah. that to tell? Oh. Well, I mean, there's, there's bad people anywhere, but for the most part, they seem, like I said, just more open-minded, just more... Uh, They'd rather approach things with curiosity rather than judgment. Uh, I, I don't think they judge. I don't think they judge. Hmm. Any of them. And Brook would probably mumble to himself, well, I'm curious to see how they would judge if I start slicing open my arms. <laughs> oh, that's... Uh... <laughs> it's, I, don't it's... Think, I don't think Oof would like that. Yeah. And yeah. neither would Om... Um... Just, you know, uh, oh, we've talked about it. <laughs> yeah, that was. That was okay, cool. I'm, uh, I'm off my appetite now a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's fine, it's fine, bro. But I, uh, oh, we've been sleeping under the stars for so long. I want to turn in early. So, uh, well, good night, the rest of you. Then right, I will meet you in front of the tavern tomorrow morning. Um, right. just in early. case, some, just in case something happens, where would we find you if we needed you? Follow the river. You will find. Me. Which in, way? Yeah. Downstream. I really expected him to say something like, you will find your own way. <laughs> <laughs> no, very fast. Follow your About heart. <laughs> uh, you know, Tekka, I just want to say you shouldn't be afraid of staying here. People aren't going to be unpeaceful or whatever. But it's up to you. Good night. That is not my reason. I appreciate okay. your concern. Okay. Good night. <clears throat> um. Thunder strikes nearby. Uh, you can feel the the inn shaking ever ever so slightly uh, as the rain uh, has really picked up by now. Um, once the thunder strikes, Brook would clearly, uh, count. Flick? Is that the right word? Surprised to hear, like, a new loud sound and not being prepared for it. Twitch. Oh, You're right. Yeah, yeah. Twitch or jump or... yeah, Twitch. Yeah. Clearly, visibly. Um... Pip, before you go to bed, uh, I just can I write? 
There is no tree in Tisin. Nope. <laughs> I well before you go to bed, I let me grab some papers from downstairs, and I have a few questions. <laughs> 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 Um, what do you need? Well, <clears throat> you know what we talked about the other night. If we want to find them, I have some people with some information. I'm not sure if it's information we are looking for, but I would leave some kind of description of your parents. I don't... I don't know if they even want me to find them. Well... You won't find out till you actually meet them, right? What would I do? What would I say? They can't be my parents again. They left me. That is a good start of a conversation. Finding out why they left, potentially? Okay. You, you said you don't know, so... Well, if that's okay with you, I would write the, the description down you're giving me. Um, How long did you wait before you started having this conversation? Well, probably if Tekka leaves immediately. Then... I'll also just say <clears throat> quietly without trying to intrude too much. Maybe they didn't have a choice. I'm really sorry, but... You know, things aren't always as they seem. What could have happened? Well... Tell us to sit up. You know, uh... I was just raised by my mother back home. Said us. Uh, who the heck uh, is that? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that is a friend of mine! Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? Wait, opening the server the like, friends? I just had a... Leave peasant. A strange sensation. <laughs> <laughs> There's something in this room! <laughs> Spirits. It's me! <laughs> your name. It's <laughs> 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 he just he just messaged me. Whoopsie, wrong lobby. <laughs> I didn't know. Like anyway, friends or someone who is not the host could join. Uh, so we learned something. Friends only, yeah. and also friends of friends and friends. Of friends hey, but tell him that he's welcome to watch the stream. <laughs> sure, I will plug. No, don't. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Already um, done. No. Anyways, I I was raised by. By my mother's, well, my mother and her family, you know, on in a little town in Galtania where we were farming. Uh, they were human. Uh, my father, well, I know this won't apply to you exactly, but I, I didn't really know my father much, but it wasn't by his, by his choice. It was just how we had to live. Maybe something happens. Maybe, maybe they needed money or something. I, Alex, I don't know. It's, it's been seven years. I know. Well, I I don't know. But I just don't want you to lose hope. You've had a very hard life. I'm sorry for... Uh, I know I, I judged you a bit now and then. I know how hard it is to be on your own. I'm not on my own. I have Granny. Well, we definitely need to meet her before we trek off on the other side of this this peninsula uh, 
it's, it's okay. I can, I can send um, a bird or something to, to let her know. Oh, it's important that you don't lose touch with family. Um, Pip will will try to give a description to Brooke. Um, uh, Pip only knows his mom and dad as mom and dad. <laughs> That's the only names he he seems to know for them, yeah. and the he just can't really give you any details like he says you know brown hair <laughs> brown eyes uh and like there's not really much that pip can give you that's like an identifying feature <clears throat> all right um pip just one more question your parents do they look similar to you Mm. That's good to know. All right. I can't promise you that this will bring us, lead us to anywhere, but it's a try, right? Yep, uh, it's... Now, if there's any reason we shouldn't do this, I won't ask any questions, but... Uh... Could we maybe start putting a picture of your face up for them to maybe see? Um. Um. Where would you put it? Well, just around every colony we come to, and maybe. Maybe someday they'll wander through and see one. We'll, we'll give them. You know, a bit of explanation and some uh, some directions for how to get a hold. Of, well, I've got a place where people can, can get a hold of me. And uh, maybe we'll get words someday. Um, uh, as long as we don't put one in litter. <laughs> All right. That's just fine. Because... Because they they weren't nice to me. All right, Pep. You don't need to explain yourself. You can put all of them here. We'll start here. Oh uh, yeah. I've already got a bit of practice. I can start sketching. Uh... Well, I suppose I'll stay up a little bit then. It's fine. I'll sleep more tomorrow. <laughs> here you wink. That guy has already left, yes? Yeah. Okay. Um, Heka, there was a... When, when uh, you were near the... Um, uh, western side of the settlement, uh, uh, close to the, to the bridge that leads to the market and to the obsidian eye, uh, you did spot uh, some trees further up ahead near the near the, uh, the bank of the river um, with one that could potentially offer some cover but it's it's uh, it's thundering uh, it, the, the rain is uh, uh, the weather is pretty bad um, in terms of like where you'd like to go what kind of place are you looking for yeah so I think Tekka would walk like further away from the town itself and uh, like walk along the river on the outskirts and do a little investigation for you know some denser trees okay yeah this area um is uh, drier than the marsh you've been traveling through uh, but if you keep following the river there, there, there comes a moment when it takes this uh, kind of really sharp uh, turn uh, south and everything gets uh, the, the, there is less, even less vegetation than before, but uh, uh, some cover here and there. Uh, you can you can give me a uh, quick survival roll and just see how you do. Gotcha. Oh, 
following the river means that you uh, abandon the main road. Uh, and when you when you do so, uh, there is a bit more vegetation to the south, but uh, it's uh, the sturdiest, largest tree you, fi you find. Uh, uh, is on its own. There aren't any like any neighboring plants that, that offer much cover. But you're you're out of uh, view of the settlement, uh, and at least here it looks nice. It's not the it, it, it's uh, it's colorful, but it's not uh, marsh like. It would be nice if it wasn't for the rain, but it's a place. Yeah, I think Taika settles there. Was there anything any of you wanted to do uh, before your long rest? <clears throat> uh, so Talix is up drawing for a while. Um, He's working with Pip to... Does, does he... Well, I mean, he just draws Pip's face over and over. Pip can go to sleep at a certain point, like... Once Talix has done it once, he's probably good to mm -hmm. just copy it. Um, uh, what would he you might say, stay uh, up after... Uh, just hmm? out of curiosity, what kind of check would you say that uh, uh, drawing something would be? Uh, dexterity and... I don't know. It's probably a tool check, right. which Talix uh, doesn't actually have proficiency in. Like, he just does like simple sketches of what he sees. Like, he's not really an artist. Okay. Yep. No, just out of curiosity, then we'll make it like a dexterity check with proficiency. With prof okay. I just figured I wouldn't be proficient. But if, uh, uh, if you want me to be, I will be. Before I forget, the only other detail that Pip was able to give was that. Uh, both of his parents were Barumian. Hmm. Hmm. Talix, Talix it's, is it's fine. a little drunk. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Talix, Brooke would also be awake and start writing the letter. And once you're done with one of your sketches. <clears throat> Could I have one of those to put it in the letter? Uh, oh, certainly. Uh, sure. You can have my first one. It's the best. I do best whenever I'm directly observing something, you know. It looks good. That Thank will you. definitely be very helpful. Hopefully the rest of these are recognizable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Potentially it's just like two triangles in a circle. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, maybe I should have just stuck to the one glass of ale. <laughs> That's what they all say, and then they always come back. But, uh, Talix was maybe going to, oh yes, beautiful, was maybe going to see if uh, he could stay up later than everyone else at this yeah. point. After the letter and asking you, Brooke would head to bed. And he's gonna throw his blanket, the blanket that he carries with him around, and try to sneak outside. Uh, okay. I mean, if you're trying to do that without the, the, the party noticing, then it will be um, your stealth versus their passive, assuming that they're asleep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Everyone's passive perception I, is... Am I throwing you off here? Is this okay? Oh, please. Everyone's passive perception, yep, it's beneath that, including Pontifexes. Um, I want to go back to that house. Okay. Uh, can I have a perception check from you? Sure. I roll so many dice. 
<laughs> mm. Mm -hmm. All right. Eight. Uh, as as you step outside out of the tavern, um, which at this point it's uh, pr it's pretty much empty. Um, the rain is such that you can barely see 10 to 15 feet ahead of you. Um, but you make your way back uh, towards the house you had located earlier. You can see uh, that there is, there is light uh, uh, coming through uh, beneath the door and uh, the closed windows. I will knock at the door. Uh, um, one more thing. Oh, no, 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 never mind, never mind. It's oh. good. Yeah, uh, as you knock on the door, after a, a few seconds, uh, the, the door opens, uh, and you see, um, you see a human woman, somewhere in perhaps her 40s or 50s, uh, with long blonde curly hair, um, holding up a candle and, uh, uh looking at you with a bit of like like a sort of like cordial smile uh but also a little bit of uncertainty as she says uh, uh hello good evening can i help you oh oh i'm terribly sorry i i believe i must have the wrong house um well uh, do you know anyone by the name of Boven? oh you have the right house, actually. Uh, Boovan, there's someone here for you. And you can, uh, peeking inside, you can see uh, to, uh, there's a couple of tables set up uh, in here with a lot of uh, papers and open books in there. And uh, quickly, the owl folk comes into view, looking wide awake compared to when you first met them earlier this afternoon. Um, uh, eyes wide in recognition as he um, clumsily almost pushes the woman out of the way and says, Ah! Ah! Uh, hello! <laughs> well, what? You... Found me! Oh, uh... Hello. Um... Yeah, uh... Come in! Sorry. It's so... This it's is... so, um... Uh, it's so wet outside. It's terrible. Please. Oh, yes. Um... Well, I, I won't... Here, I'll, I'll come in and close the door behind you, which is going to stay at the doorstep. I'd hate to track water inside but uh oh it's a lovely home by the way uh who's there are your, your um, home point to the human woman yeah there are three people in total you're the human woman you saw buvan and uh, a a halfling also woman uh who is still sitting at one of the tables uh she's wearing this uh, thin pair of glasses and she lifts them up to um as she glances at you and uh uh, Buvan, uh, Buvan says, oh, uh, it is, it is, um, in, in a way, it is where I am staying, currently, yes. Um, oh. these are my colleagues. Oh, uh, hello, uh, Talix Smoyer, nice, nice to meet you. Uh, the human woman introduces herself as Sabrina, and the halfling just, uh, uh mutters, you can barely hear her, uh, she says, Mel, and then just, uh, brings their attention back on what she's reading. Um, sorry, this is irregular, but, well, uh, we spoke earlier and, I don't know, I thought it'd be good to get a chance to maybe have someone to compare notes with. I, I haven't had someone to, well, I've been out of my research work for a while, but it'd be nice to, um... Do you, do you want to compare notes with, with me? <laughs> what? Um... Well... Uh, yeah, uh... And, uh, you know... It's strange that we've been colleagues and I've not met you yet, and, uh... You mentioned you were only going to be in town for a few days, and I was hoping maybe I could figure out uh, where I could find you again. Um, Boven looks 
beaming. Uh, he says, yes, 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 um, yes, okay, uh, oh, uh, pardon the mess. And he, like, r runs over to one of the tables, begins to just uh, toss a lot of papers off the table. Um, the halfling male lifts up the book she's reading as the elf folk comes by and clears everything else that was uh, the, that she had in front of her. Uh, pretty much just not reacting to him uh, causing this mess. Uh, Sabrina just sighs and goes at the other table and uh, um, picks up the things that are there but like in a much more orderly manner and uh, as she begins to just uh, uh, clear up a little bit she says have you eaten would you like you like something to drink a snack oh i'm i'm very full i i, I should be in bed right now but um uh, it's much much appreciated Uvan says nonsense this is the best time of the day or rather night um to be working oh um, right away. Uh, okay, um, I'm a bit wet here. Uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh. Boovan runs off into a separate room. There's a few seconds of like just, just awkwardness as yeah, I just kind of like uh, Sabrina insists on at least uh, pouring you a cup of tea. Well, I suppose I could go for some tea. Um. <laughs> what is that natural 20? Um, <laughs> secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Can it go on the counter if I don't know about it? Mm. <laughs> um. Secrets from the DM. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um... Yeah, Boovan comes back with a few towels. Oh, thank you. Okay, um... Well, I'd love to see your research on the Ezenfar. I've... Oh, I've been very interested in them for a long time, but... In my limited time here... <laughs> well, I've always been busy doing other things. I haven't actually... Learned nearly as much about the people here as I thought I would. I'd uh, love to take tonight to do that. Yes, yes, um, I have, I have, um, uh, notes, I have notes on, uh, the language and, and, and the as in themselves, uh, they are s somewhere, and it runs off again into a different room, but comes back a little bit quicker, uh, papers about... flying everywhere, <laughs> as he does. Okay, I'll, let me tell myself off here and I can just, uh, you can show me to your office? Or desk, or whatever you have. Yeah, he, he sits you down at one of the two tables that yeah, he has just cl uh, cleaned here in the, the main area. Alright. Well, I guess Talix is gonna not get much sleep tonight, and he's gonna be up st being study buddies. Mm -hmm. But I think we can mostly skip through that. Yeah. Um, and as for like a, a uh -huh. brief uh, amount of. Uh, um, of, uh, of new things that uh, Talix might learn from this. Uh, there, you guys mostly talk about the language, of course, but uh, Boon do does seem pretty excited also just about the, the, the people and their culture. Um, so there are something... two birds of a feather. <laughs> something uh, that uh, he would share that that's new to you is that uh, um, unlike Pretty much every other kind of people from Ladaria, uh, the Ezen don't seem to have uh, their own cities, their own towns, or um, or just some. Uh, yeah, they, their their particular thing is that normally they they're, they're found in the towns of other people. However, um, Duven has learned from. Uh, his, uh, his friend uh, uh, that he describes to you uh, have, uh, da, 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 da. yeah he he shares with you the fact that uh, she talked uh, about uh, a place called war that she claims to be from 
And uh, Buvan has okay. no idea what this is. He, uh, he has never heard of the word at uh, uh, ever before or after. But uh, he is very curious about it. Cool, got some lore. Oh well, yeah, uh, Talix is very, very keen on this info and just has a great time nerding out about languages and Ladaria. There comes a moment Until when he's he, to, like pass out. <laughs> yeah, the at some point uh, the Mel goes to sleep uh, and then uh, Sabrina is also uh, gone. Uh, while there is, the, the, as the night goes by, uh, Buwen seems more and more awake rather than uh, growing tired. Uh, so yeah, there comes a moment when, uh, um, at some point, Alex will open his eyes and realize that it's daytime outside, and there's uh, there's a blanket over his shoulders. Uh, all of you can take a long rest, and uh, uh, if there was anything else. Uh, to do before before that we can go over it after the break. But I am out of what? water. <laughs> I do still get the long rest. Yes, yes. <laughs> I wasn't sure. Yeah. Okay, good. Good, because I'm gonna <laughs> probably need it. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> well, you know, you'll end up oversleeping compared to the rest of the party. But yes. Oh no. <laughs> Wait. I was isn't Tox a half elf? Mm -hmm. Half elves sleep. Half elves sleep. It's not four hours. <laughs> no, that's mm -hmm. only the full elves. Ah, I see. I should only sleep six hours, but whatever. Well, you can you can <coughs> sleep six. Oh, oh I I'm see. Sure I just... <laughs> you sleep six hours whenever you guys not stay serious. awake for two hours during the night. <laughs> Why well, uh, he actually yeah. joined your channel? I just saw. Yes, <laughs> your friend showed up and said hi. We've, we've earned a viewer. Hey, servers. <laughs> we reacted very with a lot of perplexion to your sudden appearance on the table. <laughs> we're like, who is that? <laughs> okay, uh, we're going on break for ten minutes, and I'll see you then. Yeah, see you in a bit. And we're back. Hello. Hello. Welcome back, back to Cleon. My favorite colony so far. <laughs> the only yeah, colony best, you've seen. It's the best colony I've seen in this campaign so far. Uh, Alright, well, it is just like the recaps. We will have to just... Uh, no, it has to keep getting better from here on out. <laughs> okay, uh, so before the break, I left you with a question. If there was anything else that I was supposed to, to know that would happen during the night at some point. Because otherwise... Oops, squeak, squeak probably throws up at some point. No. <laughs> ah. Okay. Pip, Brooke, and Pontifex eventually awaken to the smell of cat, that uh, cat, rat vomit. Oh god. <laughs> Could be cat vomit too, the dressing okay. store. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well. Someone better clean this. Wasn't me. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> However, on the bright side, uh, you haven't uh, uh, slept in a bed in under a roof for a while, so, and it's it's been nice. Your bellies were full. You were in good company, and uh, um, it's no longer raining outside. It's still cloudy, but it's not raining and thundering. Oh yeah, and Antalix is missing. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, squeak. Did yeah. you eventually see Talix go somewhere while you were throwing up? <laughs> well, you know, come to think of it, I woke up and I didn't see him, but I didn't really think anything of it. So you did throw up. 
Shoot! Ah, you got me. <laughs> you clever. Mm. All right. If you screw up, you might as well clean it. Let's clean it. Way. Yeah. I don't work here. Well, you live here. He turns invisible. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, any of you guys know where Talix went? Pip? Pontifex? Hmm. Uh, <clears throat> a question for Talix. Um, would this have ever happened before in the company of the professor? Because, like, the opposite has happened where Pontifex would be off somewhere and Talix would know that sometimes he just does that. But, uh, what about Talix? Oh, while we were traveling together this past month? And we don't, yeah. we don't normally cohabitate. That's okay. true. Um, yeah, yeah. This uh, past month. No, I probably would have told him anywhere I was going. So th this is this is new. Uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out how like how worried he'd be. Yeah, about. I mean, well, uh, it was knowing kind of an him, accident. knowing he's a very laid back attitude, and I was like, you know, just just jump down this cliff, it will be fine. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Uh, I, perhaps he's like not too worried about it. Yeah, I mean, Talix would has never like deliberately ditched him or anything. This. Let's just go with that. Right. Um, and let's say that Talix wakes up roughly, um, you know, at, at the same time. Uh, so assuming he... Well, let, let, let's see. Uh, with Talix waking up being uh, alone, just asleep at a table, um, and looking around, and uh, Buvan is asleep at a different chair, uh, like just a bit further to the side near the window. Um, I will just write a note saying to find me at the Trespassing Tavern uh, this evening. And I will quietly exit and head back. Okay. So, uh, back to the party. Uh, you guys have been just awakened. Uh, no idea where Talix is. Uh, um, any particular... Anything in particular you'd like to do? Pontifex is getting ready for, uh... I need to stop calling it a date, but... <laughs> for, <laughs> for chatting with his friend. Uh, <clears throat> I... Rook would not be as worried once... Pontifex... Seems pretty calm about him. But Telex not being here, so he would probably go down to the barkeep with okay. the letter in his hand. Is uh is Pip coming with? Yeah, Pip will go too. Alright. Um, um yeah, go ahead. Good morning. Oh, uh, uh I'm also at this hour. Yeah, no, it's a, it's the same woman. Uh, I would have a request. Could you potentially send this letter to my fellow phantoms? And he hasn't put on his gloves yet, so he shows his right palm and then stretches out his tongue, where there's also the same tattoo. Mm hmm of the two panther heads. Yes, it's the two panther heads. Yep. Uh, she just gives a very a brief glance uh, and nods, and she um, she knocks on the on the surface of uh, the counter. Uh, she does it three times, and then two, 
uh, in a succession, and you, you know that to mean that uh, she does indeed uh, do this kind of work. <clears throat> and she'll she'll take whatever you're handing her. <clears throat> if if you can make any specifics, please deliver this to a man named Casimir. If you can't do that, tell the person who you're delivering this to to give it to him, please. The, um, is he one of you? Yeah, he is. Then uh, I can do that. All right. For no no one else's eyes. Uh, yeah, for now, for no one else's. He nods and tucks the the envelope somewhere behind the counter. All right, Pip. What do we want to do? Breakfast. Um. Is what? Um. Is there a place to get ooplus? I would turn my head to the barkeep. Is there a place to get ooplus? Um. I have some fresh ones from the market. Well, how much are they? Um, she she glances briefly at Pip and says, "Well, um, I could slice them up, and a plate of them will be two coppers." All right, make it two plates. And he hands Wait, over what am I the saying? money. Uh, breakfast is free. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> he doesn't hand over the money. <laughs> <laughs> right, all right. Breakfast I imagine. Uh. I imagine that Pip is like low enough to to the counter to where. Uh, <laughs> to <laughs> Just where... lean forward. <laughs> well, Spot and him. also, Pip spoke, so it didn't come from his own mouth, <laughs> and so I uh, I think Squeak is is you know tucked away in the folds of Pip's uh, um, Pip's shawl yeah. and uh, Pip did try at least to to cover the fact that he's not the one speaking. Right, right. Um, I'm generally on the assumption that Squeak is always near his head uh, around his scarf yeah. or on his shoulder uh, unless otherwise specified. And the shawl oh. um, the shawl really comes up like so far on lips or, or on Pip's uh, face, that it even covers his mouth sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, that that's fine. Uh, Becca. Mm -hmm. Tekka would currently be standing outside the tavern. Okay. In, in which case, uh, uh, the. Rook and Pip might eventually spot him, uh, and Talix will definitely come across him, let's say, like, right now. Um, Talix is, like, kind of shuffling. He has his hat, like, folds super low so that it almost covers his eyes. And just almost bumps into Tekka on his way to the tavern without noticing. Oh, uh, good morning. Alex, where have you been? Oh, uh, I took a walk and, uh, well, I wanted to speak to that Raul Folk again and, uh, you know, move in. Uh, okay. We just stayed up and, uh, talked about our studies. Uh, he even taught me a little something. It was just so good to... Well, it's difficult to find people with common interests for me. So... I see. Well, don't forget that you have obligations today, so get some rest now. 
Oh, uh, there's no time for that. I don't think I don't want to hold the rest of you up. Um, you do not seem yourself. Oh. You need rest. Well, if I've got time for a little nap, maybe. Oh. Good. I will walk with you to your room. Follow. Okay, just but get me up whenever you need. Don't let me slow you down. I need to deliver the professor's letter too. I'll have to bring that with us. It's okay, I know where to take it. Um, okay. just but don't let me sleep in. Fine. Okay, thank you. So when we head in, do we see Brooke and uh, Pip? Yes. Morning, Brooke, Pip. Haven't been well. <clears throat> yeah, want some ooplus? And he offers a slice. Thank you. Oh, oh yes, please. The way it's cut slice. up, it needs to be eaten with a, a spoon. Uh, it's a pretty much a bowl of them. Mm. Oh. Have uh, you yeah. not? I'll take one bite. <laughs> eaten either. Tucks. Oh, I'm not really in the mood for a meal. It's okay. I'll have breakfast later. Fine. So what's next? What's the first thing again? Go to that Ezen or? Hmm. Alex needs rest. That can wait. No, no, it's fine. Um, excuse me, Barkeep. I don't remember if she's introduced herself or not. Um, Do I name? don't believe anyone has asked for her name, no, but she comes over. Oh, excuse me, off. Miss, what's your name? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just terribly what sorry. What brought this up? <laughs> um, I don't know, she, she approaches the table. She says, uh, I am Zaya. Well... Are you here Sorry. for breakfast? Uh, so back home, uh, there was a special sort of drink that was made from plants grown in Zarda. Uh, and I could help wake you up. Do you have anything like that? Um, maybe just tea. <laughs> she has the drink. That you described. Uh, uh, she like a roasted eat. bean potion. <laughs> she can <laughs> prepare it. Uh, um, although it is called... Well, I'll have to grab something. <laughs> the inspiration Coffee. is not striking right now. But Coffee. yes. <laughs> she will uh, get that done for you right away. And then she asks if uh, Becca wants to eat. I am filled. Thank you for the offer. Have we Alex ever gets... seen Tekka eat? Yes! Okay. <laughs> Just making sure. Forget how Ezin yeah. eat. How does Tekka eat? Uh, what? He eats like a... <laughs> does... no one else. He absorbs nutrients through the earth. <laughs> but only fruits and vegetables. <laughs> I said he ate animals, but he didn't eat our animals. Oh, true. You have seen seen him eat meat and bread as well. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you have breakfast. You have your drinks, and yes, where's your uh, your first stop for the day? Well, uh, before the professor takes off, let's get that letter. Thank you, professor. <laughs> Promised, uh, this, this man says he can get it there, so... Uh, and he might owe us a favor after all said and done. We'll see. Okay. Uh, well, I suppose... We should see the essence first, if 
Unless there's anything the rest of you need to do? I have no more to be done. All right, let's pop in the infirmary. All right. Hmm. Uh, you leave the tavern, leaving Pontifex behind, who is waiting on his friend to show up. And uh, you head for the building where you met uh, uh, the doctor the day before. Uh, the door is still wide open. And as you um, as you're making this, uh, it's very short walk, uh, but pretty much in a straight line from the tavern to uh, where Unp works. It starts to drizzle again. Uh, you mm -hmm. step in to find uh, that uh, um, currently Unp is uh, not within uh, sight. I'll just give a little knock. Anp, we've returned. Is there anything you need help with today? And um, you can see that the beds are empty today. Uh, and as, uh, after there is no, uh, you don't hear a reply. But uh, after about half a minute, uh, Anp does slowly uh, walk in into the room from uh, from behind a curtain, and. Uh, uh, approaches and stops about like a good uh, 10 feet away from the group uh, and uh, just gestures at the empty beds and says no one is in need today uh, alright then um, well we won't trouble you just thought I'd check on you their head turns slightly towards Tekka as Amp asks, Do you have more? No. Are I you will in need? Always. We will keep it in mind. Hump just stands there, completely unmoving. Alright, uh, yes, we'll keep an eye out, and, uh, thank you, you'll see us again before we leave town. Promise. Okay. Uh, let's go on to the priest, I suppose. Okay. All right, you make your way across the bridge. Uh, on the on the other side, uh, the stage at this hour is empty, and very few. Uh, well, there's a few stands that are uh, mainly the food ones that are uh, already at people uh, selling fresh uh, fresh food. Uh, but unless there's anything you'd like to look for. Uh, you could make your way straight to the temple. Temple it is. Talos is good, yep. <laughs> yep. Okay. Now, uh, for all of you except uh, uh, Talix, uh, this is your first time uh, uh, visiting it. Uh, uh, let me think, let me think. For a second. Okay. Alright, so as they described last time, uh, within this temple, there is uh, um, more than just the Pantheon of Plurina. Uh, the, besides uh, the uh, statues representing one Vakanath, then 13, the other the animal gods, gods beneath her, uh, there's also a few, and again, uh, all of you immediately recognizing the one of the Lady of the Land, uh, considering what you've been up to lately. Uh, and a few others that uh, 
uh, that you spot near the entrance, and each of them has a bit of like this this little shrine with offerings placed in front of them. Although mm, they're all the ones that are not uh, of the Plurian and Pantheon are currently empty with no candles lit. Uh, unless the italics light. Uh, no, I think Alex only left something in front of the Valkanath. I right, only, right? yeah, I considered it, but yeah, it was just the Valkanath shrine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so that's the, yeah, that's the current situation. Uh, the, there is currently, there is currently nobody in here. You have the entire temple just to you. Well, uh, last I saw him, he was. In, a, in the office at the back. He seems to be somewhat reclusive right now. Well, do you want to not? Alright. Here's open. Tekaz walked immediately to the statue of the Lady of the Land. And it's uh, not you. This one is, you want uh... us to wait up, Tekka? We can give you a few minutes. I... Will join you later. All right. Okay. Uh, the others are all going with Alex. Mm-hmm. Tip as well. All right, let's go. I think Austin might be half. Oh no! Ah, no, I'm oh. not. I just forgot I was muted. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. But what's your answer? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Tega, can I, out of curiosity, can I have a religion check? Oh, for sure. And Anytime. one Ooh. from Brooke. A religion check? Yeah. Is this to recognize some of the other stuff? Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. Okay. In which case, um, the only one that the two of you, um, oh no, Brooke knows another one, okay. Uh, Tekka is familiar with, uh, uh, that's sorry, Tekka and Brooke, uh, also know of, uh, um, this other one. There is a t there is this carving of two dragons uh, that they they're complete. They completely mirror one another. They're identical, just mirrored, and they're both curled around uh, each of them around a sphere. And both of you know them to be uh, named after the moons Kyriel and Miriel, known as the twins. And Brook. You uh, also know of another one. Uh, there is a statue of. Uh, uh, <laughs> where is it? Where is it? Here it is. Uh, of a horned woman whose lower half of the body is uh, uh, partially submerged. Uh, she, you know her as uh, Nadarath, uh, the daughter of the sea. These are both Lidarian uh, deities. Can you spell the name, please? Yes, yes. O R S three. Nadaras Lady of the Sea. Is that what you said? The daughter of the sea. Mm. All right. Oh, I was close. Okay, yeah. Alex, you make your way uh, to the the door and you knock on it um i'm back hello uh, this time the door opens pretty much immediately uh, although it's still only just uh, uh, a narrow space opens up and uh, <clears throat> uh, you see egon just uh, quickly glancing outside recognizing you and then looking at the two people accompanying you uh especially lingering on the child that is uh, uh, with you and you see him narrow his eyes uh, um with uh, 
obvious, uh, uh, he's clearly perplexed. But then he opens the door a little wider and uh, gestures for you to come in. Uh, we've got one more out there, but he's uh, preoccupied. He'll be in here soon. Um, okay, well, let's come in. Although there's no one out there, you know, we don't need to be so... Oh, just, just come in. Alright. So, uh... uh Y'all step inside his office. He's, he closes the door, um, rubs his hands, and then goes to sit behind the desk. Uh, and again, glances up and down Brooke, uh, at Brooke first, and then Pip. Uh, to, to both of you, he looks... Um, almost solemn, like, uh, like there is a, a, like, whatever you're about to talk about is pretty serious. It says, oh, okay, um, right. Well, good morning to, to all of you. Has uh, Alex informed you of the situation? He has. He nods slowly. Uh, Alex, I was under the impression that you were talking about a larger group. Well, we've got, like I said, one more out there, and also another one who, uh, well, he won't be joining us here, but if there's something, well, you need us to undertake something for you? Some sort of, uh, mission off into the wilderness? Done plenty of those? Uh, something like that, yes. Uh, but if there is a... There is a phantom with you, uh, then this, this should be easy. Just piece of cake. Really simple, really simple. Mm hmm. What does this connect to your problem? Well, it will help. Uh, it will help, yes. Yes, 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 it is. I, I, I said how. If I think oh, oh, oh. Um, how does this connect to your problem? Well,. Let me explain, and it will it will become clear. Uh, I've had a talk with our local doctor about things. Uh, I, I didn't go into any details, so the, they don't need them. Uh, and I, I've learned of something very peculiar that is that is of interest to me. Uh, if you. Have you, have any of you be, uh, been in Vera before? Maybe, let me... Ah, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a road that leads, uh, like, it, if you leave from Cleon in the opposite direction from where you came and you follow the road, that's where you'll end up. So Talix and Pontevex have definitely been through it. Uh, uh Tech and Pip haven't, and Brubuk you probably have, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what? Oh, yeah, it's not too far. Oh. Well, according to, according to Anp, uh, um, just north uh, of Vera, there is, uh, northwest, there is a lake, and, uh, uh, that is where I need you guys to go. <laughs> You're gonna have to tell us a little bit more than that. Yes, yes, right, right, right. Uh, there is a cemetery near that lake. Um cemetery that's been built by uh, a Taran filly. And oh. there, at the, at the base of a large tree uh, with... And he, he checks his, like, a note on on, uh, on his uh, desk real quick. Uh, purple, purple leaves, a tree with purple leaves. Uh, there's someone buried. And I need you to open up her coffin. Now, I know this is, I know this is uh, unusual, but she has been buried with a glove, and that glove has 
properties of uh, uh, healing wounds and diseases. And I believe, and Anta agrees with me, uh, that that glove will be put to better use in the hands of the living. Do you want us to rob the grave of some Ladarian healer? Now, again... Am uh, I understanding you correctly? It, it is... I know it is a uh, very unusual request coming from, from someone like me, but you, you understand how this could help, yes? Not really. <laughs> well, what, if I... you're going to pretend? You're going to lie. This is not what you need. Please, it, 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 it's going to work. If I just if I just have that, I can keep my job. And I can do good. I can put that glove to good use. And why aren't you getting the glove yourself? I can't leave the town. I'm supposed to be working here. Okay, I refuse to go any further with this until our friend joins us in here. That's probably a smart decision. If you look behind okay. you, you see Tekka's in the entryway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, uh, yeah, you can definitely I, how much it. of that did you just hear? I have heard enough. I will not be part of this. Egon, Egon, uh, yeah, sorry, Egon glances but... up and down at, at Tekka, uh, looking a little pale. Glancing back at Alex, he, he's your... Is that him? Your, your uh, companion? Yeah, that's right. He's my friend. Egon. Maybe I'm not the one to inspire you with good words. But all I can tell you is that I suggest you look inward a bit more and ask yourself how you got where you are, what you might have forgotten along the way. I'm sorry, but we can't do this. The right? Alex, please, reconsider. Tekka takes a few steps in. If you are to be a priest and healer in this land, you need to respect the land and the people living in it, dying in it. Alex just kind of like, yeah, nods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Egan looks very pale, uh, sweating. He, he leans a little bit back into his chair, just as if like just putting that those few inches of distance between himself and Tekka would somehow help him. Uh, he opens his mouth, but he doesn't really say anything. He doesn't seem to uh, know what to say. Hagon, you will be in my prayers. I really hope you can find your path back to righteousness. That's what you're missing right now. In the meantime, the resin here is very capable. And uh, we'll get them whatever, whatever supplies we can to help them. But maybe a pretender priest is not what this town needs right now. Okay, let's go. I'm sorry, everyone. Nothing to apologize about. Mm. Uh, as you all send that, he, <clears throat> Egon will still call back to you, uh, begging you to reconsider, but if you want, you're free to go. Pip stays. 
Talix isn't going to leave without Pip. Okay, yep. Uh, we'll Talix, stand at the door and... Yeah, Talix and, and Brooke stand up and you're like ready to leave, but uh, you turn back waiting on Pip. Uh, Pip will will push the the shawl further up his own face to cover his own mouth, and then we'll say, "Why did you lose your faith?" Uh, Egan seems to be um, very carefully choosing his words, perhaps um, trying to find a way to put it that. Uh, uh, that a child could understand. Uh, um, what is he? Glances uh, around the room nervously, not meeting anyone's gaze. Uh, um, and he collapses a, l collapses a little bit further into his chair. He sighs and says, I... I don't know. Maybe I just never deserved it. Did something happen? I can't think of uh, something specific happening. Not, not really. I've always felt like an imposter. <laughs> like this wasn't really where I, where I belonged. Like I wasn't deserving of the fox's blessings, but I had them, and I tried to convince myself that the fox saw something in me. But I suppose whatever the fox did see is gone now. Perhaps Talix is right. I just <laughs> and he he uh, rubs his eyes. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know if my family is going to be okay. There may be something I can do. But I'll need some things from you. Um, hmm. Egan seems to almost, uh, almost like wait on the others to interject. Like almost, almost uh, expecting like permission in a way but uh, after a few seconds he just yeah just slightly concerned just <laughs> just watching now with just a twinge of fear <laughs> yeah i guess that brooke would also listen closely and just in general try to listen to their speech if possible and see if anyone is Having any evil intent, slash lying, mm. slash trying to, mm. I don't know, do something bad there. Right. Um, so it goes for both, probably. Both Pip and Egon? Yeah. Okay, well, I'll take two insight checks from you. The first one will be uh, for Pip. Mm-hmm. And uh, Austin will answer that one in terms of, like... Good slash bad intentions. So this should be against like oh. his passive charisma. So it's like passive. Eleven. Uh, well, for Pip, I would just uh, it's just whatever Austin wants to say. Uh, All right. But yeah, uh, plus three, I figured. Uh, but I can tell you for the second one on Egon that. Uh, um, Hmm. You're not sure if he's actually considering the possibility that uh, um, that this kid could have something for him. Like you're not sure if he's that desperate or if he's uh, um, just listening to see where this goes. Um, but uh, he, uh, you can tell that his attention is definitely like fully on paper at this point. And uh, Austin. Yes. The first um, uh, result, yeah. It's not for you, the 12. Pip, you would... You would believe 
or you would see seems to have good intentions here. Um, but you're you're uncertain about what methods Pip may employ to to get there. All right. Okay. And uh, Egan is going to listen to what Pip is about to suggest. A drop of sweat, a clump of hair, a worn down sock, and a clip of nail. All yours, and I need them. I... I don't understand. What do you mean? Sweat? I sweat? Pip will take a step closer towards him. <laughs> and he will hold up a hand and wipe it across his forehead. <laughs> that will do just fine. <clears throat> what was the fourth one after the suck? <clears throat> uh, it was a drop of sweat, a clump mm -hmm. of hair, a worn down sock, and a clip of nail. Thank you. And uh, with Pip's hand sort of wet with the residual sweat that's on Egon's brow, he will take out this white cloth doll that you've seen Pip carry this whole time. And Pip will smear it across the doll's forehead. Uh, Tekka oh. will take out his small knife and hand it to Egon. Will you do it? Or is this? <laughs> what? What? Pip says this will help. Then you should do it. Roll an intimidation check. <laughs> <laughs> Are you wearing your intimidation chain, sir? <laughs> 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 Chainsaw. <laughs> you should do it. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. Can I make an intimidation check? As well? uh, yes. Yes, you can. Whoops. I mean, to roll it on the desk. Jesus. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's so what much sick? more intimidating. <laughs> In terms of but modifiers. But also not. <laughs> so, yeah, but no, he isn't. He's just... He just... Pips just looks, like, very serious, you know? Um, like, he's... Uh, he is doing something with purpose. Uh, and, uh... Egan... Definitely uh, seems absolutely uncertain about this, but at this point, yes, he does seem desperate enough. Uh, where he, he will proceed to um, uh, well, starting from the hair, I guess. Um, he does have like a slightly early rolls are pretty short but he can cut off like two inches um a small 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 handful to just uh place on the desk and as he does that he he says if this is some kind of a kind of magic um and he uh begins to clip off one of his nails i uh, is this something you're going to do? Just have faith. <laughs> uh... <laughs> then he says, well, uh, I'll, I'll go get the sock. Unless, well, uh, and he just takes off one of his shoes and removes a sock and uh, hands it to you. <laughs> Pip will take it and immediately force the sock up onto the uh, one of the legs of the 
uh, the doll. And Pip will hold out his hand for the hair and then begin pressing it down onto the the doll's head. And uh, Pip will start um, taking out a couple of needles and will begin sort of uh, weaving the hair into the head of the doll. The nail. He hands the, <clears throat> the bit of nail that he removed. And Pip will uh, wedge it into one of the hands, sort of pressing it into the cloth and then forcing it out through the other side where it's on the hand. And Pip will rummage in his backpack and begin taking out these strips of cloth and starts to dress this doll, looking up at times at Egon before looking down and getting back to his work. And over the course of the next several minutes, you see this doll begins to start appearing a lot like Egon, taking its form. Until it's done. Egan's eyes definitely widen during the process, but he will not uh, disturb Pip in any way. He, he looks like he's barely breathing. Pip, have you done this before? I have. But what I'm trying to see what I'm trying to do here. It might not work, but I think it's our best shot. Then do it. Pip will take out um, from his pouch a smaller sack. And in this sack, uh, it's sort of just a, a a piece of cloth that's tied together with string and as Pip loosens that string and he lays this out on the table inside this cloth are several small needles and Pip will hold up the doll and say Egon if you've lost your faith there might be something within you that's blocking you that's keeping you. I'm going to try and find it. And Pip will hold up one of the needles, sort of glints in whatever dim light is in the room. And then Pip is going to prick it into the side of the doll. And then take more and begin pricking the doll, almost like acupuncture. And Pip is going to use the feature pinpoint on the effigy. You may spend an action pricking small needles into the effigy in order to gain insight into the, into the target's defenses. Um, and so with four tokens, um, I can learn all of these things that it lists. Um, and I don't know if this is going to work to find what, what we need, but Pip is basically trying to find if there's something if there's something within Egon that's that's somehow blocking him from from having faith from from doing what he normally did, and so okay. but the the options that it lists are: you discover the target's resistances, you discover the target's vulnerabilities, the target's immunities, and you discover the target's greatest phobia. All right, that's all four of them. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, does Egon feel anything when this happens? Uh, probably a little tingly. <laughs> <laughs> a feeling feeling and something needles. tingle on uh, uh, wherever Pip places a new needle. Yeah. And the rest of you would see him uh, flinching every once in a while as uh, as uh, Pip is uh, pushing these needles into the doll. Okay. I will need a moment. Oh. 
What the heck, it's Austin? Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I kind of already knew about it, but wow! <laughs> that's uh, that's an interesting way of going about it. Uh, yeah, it's you know, it doesn't say that that's something I right, can do, it's, but it's, uh, it's beyond the scope. <laughs> I mean, but I like the like, in terms of flavoring. Like some, some like mental insight. Okay. Plus, it's his first time using the doll. Like, give him <laughs> something. <laughs> it does nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, here's what I can uh, give you. In terms of... Uh... Oh, where did I put it? Over here. Resistances and vulnerabilities and immunities, he has none of those. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing for any of them. Um, as for the target's greatest phobia, um, Pepe Zhu uh, is a clutcher doll. Uh, and you close your eyes for a moment, and the beneath. Behind your, your eyelids, uh, you're struck with uh, a brief vision, and it comes with uh, more than just uh, sight. Uh, you can you can smell flowers that you've never smelled before. You see um, a sky that you don't quite recognize, with an enormous uh, tree far away into the distance, and you see a, a house that you have never been to. Uh, built out of wood, it's modest, uh, uh, and with nothing but uh, farmland surrounding it. But all the crops are dead, and uh, the house is completely empty. And you feel this uh, uh, this horrible uh, feeling of of uh, uh, something lacking, something missing. Uh, you felt like that uh, when every day after your parents disappeared it is this grief this sadness when somebody you cared about is gone uh the realization that you have no family left and this this incessant thought in your head that it's your fault that they're gone the greatest fear of uh, of egon is his inability um to keep his family alive and safe and fed. <clears throat> As you uh, try to push in just a little further to, to gain any other glimpse uh, into what this man is, who he is, and what he can do, um, you... As you get nothing for the, for the other... Uh, but the other things you're trying to glimpse into his mind, you just you push just a little bit further, and you're certain that uh, this man is alone. There is no one with him. Certainly not somebody of uh, um, of the caliber of a deity. There is no connection between Egan Heartbloom and something else, something greater. This man does not have a... <clears throat> uh, how do I put this? Does not have a figure like Pip does. Uh, Pip has granny. But uh, this man doesn't have anyone. Okay. Pip will let out a little bit of a gasp as these come to his mind. And then we'll look to Egon. Your connection. It's been severed. 
The priest is just leaning all the way back uh, on his chair, uh, all color is drained from his face, and he's rubbing his arms in a, in, like he's, like he's uncomfortable. Um, get carefully just sort of like pressing his fingers into his muscles, like he's trying to, to wake them up. Um, staring wide-eyed at Pip. He opens his mouth, but just sort of just stutters something that doesn't really make uh, any sense. None, he doesn't form any complete word. How long ago... How long have you been like this? He takes a deep breath, straightens his back a little bit, sits back on, on, on the chair, normally. Since... It's been about four months now. Since, uh, what happened four the, months ago? I, I don't know. Uh, it was before the, the year ended. Uh, I, I don't know, it was from one day to another. I woke up, and there was nothing. I Could didn't do it? anything. I felt alone. <laughs> I... I don't know what that was. Uh, but I'm not going to tell anyone about it. Perhaps. No, say nothing. Alex, you were right. There's nothing happened to me. It's just, it's just me. I should let the church know. That's brave of you. He shakes his head, but uh, doesn't say anything in reply. <laughs> Pip looks down at the doll and begins taking the needles out and laying them back on the cloth and as he does so he he looks back at Talix and just says <sighs> he's afraid Talix I would be too. Many of us are. Many of us are. Maybe you should write your family as well, you know? Just get in touch with them. It's good to remember. Well, remember our connections. I... As for my part, if you plan on coming clean to the church, well, first of all, I want you to know you can always get a hold of me uh, in Aria. I mean, it'll get to me eventually. And uh, maybe next time I'm there, I can see if, uh, if I can get in touch with any of your fellow priests of the Fox. Maybe someone we can relate to a bit more. Might be a bit more helpful to you than I would be. I promise they'll... They'll help you. I... I'm planning on... Sending everything of value I have. I'll sell all of it. And all the money I'll make from that, I'll... I'll send it to my family with uh, a letter. And... Hopefully the money will keep them... Bad while I will likely be 
put on a ship. You know, uh, when the church found me, or, well, when they brought me in, I was a fugitive from my home country. A uh, fugitive from the law, actually. I got into some trouble when I was young. I was, uh... Well, I'd become the lowest sort of wretch. <laughs> you could imagine. It's... It's thanks to them that I have anything now. That I can still write home to my family and do good for the world. I didn't have all this before I found the church, before they took me in. I promise they help people. As long as you have good intentions, as long as you're willing to do good, Okay. I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. And, uh, you, child. Get just as Pip. I don't know what you've done today, but... You know that... You should... Never... Do something like that in front of strangers. Right? Most people out there, they're... You're not going to react uh, positively to that. Yes, I know. But, uh... If you have to, you ever encounter someone else uh, uh, in need of your help, like me, then he steps up, reaches for uh, one of the many shelves uh, in the office, and picks up a box, opens it, <clears throat> uh, and uh, pulls out a, uh, a pendant, and he, from a different box, he grabs a chain and runs it uh, through it, and then hands it to Pip, and says, If you ever have to do magic in front of people, if you hold this, uh, uh, they may not suspect a thing. Mm. Looks down at it. Is it of any sp specific deity? Uh, yes, of the fox. There is, I've uh... done it. So it's a. He got a fox. Um, so the, the pendant is metallic, and it's not a particularly like. It's just a. Uh, it's just steel. Um, and it's the head of a fox and a tail that is curled sort of like in a circle. And in the middle, it's wrapped around uh, uh, a piece of resin. And within the resin itself, you can see what seems to be a tiny, tiny leaf uh, with uh, six different points uh, uh, to it. Um, Pip would take it, um, but then would look back up at Egon and say, Egon, do you miss your family? Um, he nearly drops the box as he was in the process of putting it away, uh, catches it, slides it slowly into the shelf, and, uh, his shoulders slump a little. He doesn't even turn to look at Pip, and he just says, Always. Always. Maybe you haven't lost your faith. Maybe you're just homesick. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Thank you, all of you. And sorry for wasting your time. I... I should attend to my duties. 
for what a little time I have left here in this colony. He gestures for the door. All right. Okay, well, we gone. Let's go. We're going to do a little bow and then also start leaving. Pitbull, as as they're as you're all walking out the the door, Pitbull start taking the things off of the doll, and after they're all off, Pip holds them in his hand, and they all <laughs> erupt in a bright green flame, and they're gone. Normal, normal. I definitely stop outside in the. Uh... Once we're out of, you know, around the bend, away from the door. Pep, that was certainly something. And Pep will uh, put this pendant around his neck and just say, Just your everyday fox magic. <laughs> well, you got something real precious there. That's a piece of the mother tree. Well, okay. <laughs> uh, you Trust guys me. just happen to be pretty much in front uh, of uh, the, the very latest statue that's further into the temple, so it's right where you're standing is the one of Akanath. Well. Anyways, that was uh, very impressive. I thought. I thought there would be something there, but Egon's without anyone. Is that how faith works? No. If you have faith, you're never alone. But I just tap my pouch. He had the fox, and then the next day, it was gone? Oh, I think you were onto something. Maybe he lost more than the fox. Maybe he lost his purpose. You know, his family. He's probably tired of being apart from them for so long. And he lost sight of why he did it in the first place. Maybe it'll be good for him to go home, see them again. Do you think that if you are gone from home for too long, you'll lose your powers too? Well, so far I've been fine. Well, if you do, then you know what I'll, I can do for you. Huh. All right. But, uh... Walking off my family too. But I very much appreciate it, but Well, that's uh that's my day done. Uh I might take a little nap if you don't mind. <laughs> Been awake for a long time, right? I slept, just not much. Oh. And uh, the potion's wearing off. <laughs> but uh, the rest of you, please uh, ch check for those bulletins or whatever. Find one? Sure. Alright. I'll meet you back at the Tresson this afternoon. As the four of you step out of the temple into the pouring rain, uh, that's where I'm going to call the session for today. Yeah. Mm. Pip. Wow! What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no! 
Oh, I've got that, like, some crazy stuff. <laughs> We're not gonna go grave robbing for this well, guy. No, I, I no. Did, no, but I didn't expect Pip to be the one who would like <laughs> be the one to convince him. Is that what I did? <laughs> well. You in, I mean, you rolled for intimidation, not for persuasion, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's not that the one... Yeah, go ahead. That was pretty cool. That was pretty cool use of that spell. Very clever. Yeah. Captain. Wow. And you got a fox. <laughs> Very and cool. I got a fox. <laughs> I, I did it. <laughs> Your now I actually ever. have to write a summary. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be Dennis's Good turn luck. again. And uh, because all of your... I'm... Alright. First of all, I do want to thank you, Dennis, for starting this tradition. Um, <laughs> I do think it's lovely I, I love seeing what you guys come up with, and uh, uh, I am going to assemble, I think in groups of five, so starting now, I'm going to assemble all the summaries, so the summaries of the first five sessions, all like in one video, and have it up, and then do that at oh, five, and I think it would be really great. cute to see. I love yes. it. Cool. So, uh, yeah, thank you, thank you all for like the effort you've each put in uh, into your little recaps. They've all they've all been a joy. Uh, they've all been a, an incredible addition to this campaign. Uh, really, really <laughs> happy with that. And I'm going to to let you go now. I'll see you again next week. See you Probably. next week. It's still Are Sunday you... for next week. Jason? Yeah, I mean, I should have a holiday weekend, so I should be good. All right, awesome. Same day, Ooh. same time. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 See ya. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dream is over. Oh.